Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Faith Lutheran Mission Church. My name is Nick Kessler, pastor here at the church. Good morning to everyone who is sitting in our pews, and good morning to everyone who is watching us online. How are you doing today, Kayla? Are you ready to worship? Oh, Kayla's ready to worship. <coughs> are you ready to worship? Yes. yes. All right. All right. Kayla's going to bring us into the presence of the Lord with some music. Just to ask you to open up your hearts and minds for what God has to say for you today. <coughs> on the screen, I ask you to please rise as you are able.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we, we confess that we are bondage to sin and we cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us renew us and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all of our sins. As a call and ordained minister of Lutheran congregations and mission for Christ, and by God's authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
majesty and mystery, renewing and fulfilling creation by your eternal Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for revealing your glory through your Son. Cleanse us from doubt and fear and enable us to go and make disciples of all nations through the promise and power of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit as one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. Then he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness night. And evening passed, and morning came, marking the first day. Then God said, Let there be a space between the waters to separate the waters of the heavens from the waters of the earth. And that is what happened. God made this space to separate the waters of the earth from the waters of the heavens. God called the space sky, and the evening passed, and the morning came, marking the second day. Then God said, Let the waters beneath the sky flow together into one place, so dry ground may appear. And that is what happened. God called the dry ground land, and the waters seas, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the land sprout with vegetation, every sort of seed bearing plant and trees that grow seed-bearing fruit. These seeds will then produce the kinds of plants and trees from which they came. And that is what happened. The land produced vegetations, all sorts of seed-bearing plants, the trees bearing fruit. Their seeds produced plants and trees of the same kind. And God saw that it was good. An evening passed and morning came, marking the third day. Then God said, let lights appear in the sky to separate the day from the night. Let them be signs to mark the seasons, days, and years. Let these lights in the sky shine down on the earth. And that is what happened. God made two great lights, the larger one to govern the day, and the smaller one to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set these lights in the sky to light the earth, to govern the day and night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And evening passed, and morning came, marking the fourth day. Then God said, Let the waters swarm with fish and other life. Let the skies be filled with birds of every kind. So God created great sea creatures, and every living thing that scurries and swarms in the water, and every sort of bird, each producing offspring of the same kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply. Let the fish fill the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. <clears throat> An evening passed, and morning came, marking the fifth day. Then God said, Let the earth produce every sort of animal, each producing offspring of the same kind. Livestock, small animals that scurry along the ground, and wild animals. And that is what happened. God made all sorts of wild animals, livestock, and small animals, each able to produce <coughs> offspring of the same kind. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let us make human beings in our image, to be like us. They will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the wild animals on the earth, and the smaller animals that scurry along the ground. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female. He created them. Then God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and govern it. Rain over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. And God said, Look, I have given you every seed-bearing plant throughout the earth and all the fruit trees for your food. And I have given every green plant as food for all the wild animals, and the birds in the sky, and the small animals that scurry along the ground, everything that has life. 
And that is what happened. Then God looked over all he had made, and he saw it was very good. And evening passed, and morning came, marking the sixth day. So the creation of the heavens and the earth and everything in them was completed. On the seventh day, God had finished his work of creation, so he rested from all his work. And God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy, because it was the day when he rested from all his work of creation. This is the account of the creation of the heavens and the earth. Here ends the reading. The psalm is from Psalm 8. It's found in 217 of the Green Hymnal. Uh, or you can follow along on the screen. I will read the odd. If you would reply, please, with the even. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. How is all servants and children. Your majesty is praised above the heavens. You have set up a stronghold against your adversaries to quell the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses. What is man that you should be mindful of him, the son of man that you should seek him out? You have made him a little lower than the angels. You adorn him with glory and honor. You give him mastery over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field. The birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever walks in the paths of the sea. O oh Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. The second lesson is from the second chapter of Acts, beginning with verse 14. <coughs> Then Peter stepped forward with the eleven other apostles and shouted to the crowd, People of Israel, listen! God publicly endorsed Jesus, the Nazarene, by doing powerful miracles, wonders, and signs through him, as you well know. But God knew what would happen, and his prearranged plan was carried out when Jesus was betrayed. With the help of lawless Gentiles, you nailed him to a cross and killed him. But God released him from the horrors of death and raised him back to life, for death could not keep him in its grips. King David said this about him, I see that the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken, for he is right beside me. No wonder my heart is glad, and my tongue shouts his praises. My body rests in hope. For you will not leave my soul among the dead, or allow your Holy One to rot in the grave. You have shown me the way of life, and you will fill me with the joy of your presence. Dear brothers, think about this. You can be sure that the patriarch David wasn't referring to himself, for he died and was buried, and his tomb is still here among us. But he was a prophet, and he knew God had promised with an oath that one of David's own descendants would sit on his throne. David was looking into the future and speaking of the Messiah's resurrection. He was saying that God would not leave him among the dead and allow his body to rot in the grave. God raised Jesus from the dead, and we are all witnesses of this. Now he is exalted to the place of highest honor in heaven at God's right hand. And the Father, as he has promised, gave him the Holy Spirit to pour out upon us, just as you see and hear today. For David himself never ascended into heaven yet. He said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit in the place of honor at my right hand until I humble your enemies and make them a footstool under your feet. So let everyone in Israel know for certain that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, to be both Lord and Messiah. Here ends the reading. Please rise as you're able for the gospel. <laughs> And on earth. 
Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Today is officially Holy Trinity Sunday, where we celebrate the perfect unity in our triune God that exists between God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, our triune God is spoken of throughout the Bible, even though the actual word Trinity is nowhere to be found. Yet, it is this three-in-one doctrine of the church that we believe in with our whole hearts. Now, the official doctrine of the Trinity reads something like this. The being of the one eternal deity has three eternal and essential distinctions, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Three persons in one substance and one being in three distinct beings. They are co-eternal and co-equal. Now, the divine nature is fully undividedly contained, even though the persons are in the closest possible unity with one another and interpenetrate one another, each has a distinct character when viewed in relation to the others. The Father is not begotten, but is said to be ingenerate. The Son is begotten eternally and proceeds by divine filiation. The Spirit then proceeds by divine spiritual affiliation from both the Father and the Son. And that's the official doctrine of the Trinity. Did you get all that? No. <laughs> Don't feel bad, folks. It took the early church over 400 years to come up with this statement about the Trinity. And the doctrine of the Holy Spirit took almost a thousand years to fully develop. St. Augustine of Hippo, one of the great fathers of the early church, took nearly 30 years of his ministry life to write 15 volumes about, called About the Trinity. And he was constantly updating and revising his work. And even St. Augustine realized the scope and depth of what he was trying to understand when he went for a walk one day along the beach. There along the shore, he saw a little boy digging a hole in the sand with a seashell. The boy then ran off to the ocean, filling the shell with water, and then rushed back to pour into the hole he had made. What are you doing, my little man? St. Augustine asked. I'm trying to put the ocean in this hole, the little boy said. Augustine suddenly realized that that was precisely what he was trying to do, to fit the great mysteries of the ocean of God into the little hole of his mind. It just seems beyond a human comprehension to grasp the concept of the Trinity. Three persons in one God. And each person fully God. So a lot of people just end up saying, why bother? I have enough problems with things that I do understand, let alone things I don't understand. So what is it that we mean when we say the Apostles' Creed? Every Sunday, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. I believe in Jesus Christ. His only Son, our Lord. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Do we believe in one God or three different gods as the Muslims claim we do? This morning, we are going to look at some characteristics about our triune God that's going to help us understand what we mean when we talk about the Holy Trinity. The first characteristic we need to remember is that God is one. Every day, an Orthodox Jewish person will recite, recite the Shema, 
which is from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4, which says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. And these words hold true for every Christian as well as Jewish believers. Now that word one comes from the Hebrew word achad, which means the absolute primary number one. Now those of you who remember your mathematics studies in school know that the distinguishing characteristic of a primary number is that it's indivisible by any other number. And the same holds true for our almighty God. He is one and indivisible. And when the Lord gave his people the Ten Commandments, Exodus chapter 20, verse 3, gives us this command. You must not have any other God but me. And this is confirmed in the New Testament. If we go to the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 4 through 6, the scripture tells us this. For there is one body and one spirit, just as you have been called to one glorious hope for the future. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God and Father who is over all and in all and living through all. Now the teaching of one God is clear in the Old and the New Testaments. Yet our God is three in one. One Spirit, one Lord, and one Father which all equals one God. Jesus revealed that his followers were to be baptized in the name of the Trinity from our gospel text for today in verses 18 and 19. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth, therefore go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So to say that our God is three different gods is completely contrary to what the Bible teaches. Scripture clearly states in the first book of Timothy, chapter 2, verse 5, for there is only one God and one mediator who can reconcile God and humanity, the man Christ Jesus. Folks, there is only one God, and our God is one. The second characteristic of our triune God is that the Trinity has always existed. Let's go back to the very beginning of the Bible. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, tells us about God the Father and the mastermind of creation. Then, verse 2 speaks of another attribute of God. The earth was formless and empty. And darkness covered the deep waters, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Now this verse tells us of God's Spirit hovering over creation, watching it, caringly, like a protector. Then, in verse 3, we're inter we are introduced to the Word of God. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. Then in verse 3, we are to introduce again to that word of God, let there be light. Now, we may need to take a little bit more at that word of light and what that means. Because it is the word of God. The word of God. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, and scripture tells us this. In the beginning was the word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through Him, and nothing was created except through Him. The Word gave life to everything that was created, and His life brought light to everyone. But Jesus Himself proclaims His divine characteristic has always existed. And says this in verses 54 through 58. If I want glory for myself, it doesn't count. But it is my Father who will glorify me. 
You say he is our God, but you don't even know him. I know him. If I said otherwise, I would be as great a liar as you. But I do know him and obey him. Your father Abraham rejoiced as he looked forward to my coming. He saw it and was glad. The people said, you aren't even 50 years old. How can you say you have seen Abraham? Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. Before Abraham was even born, I am. In those verses, Jesus proclaims that the Trinity has always existed. The Apostle Paul speaks of the truth of the Trinity in the first book of Corinthians, chapter 12, verses 4 through 6. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit is the source of them all. There are different kinds of service, but we serve the same Lord. God works in different ways, but it is the same God who does the work in all of us. Since the Trinity has always existed, it's therefore perfectly consistent within the Bible that our triune God is revealed to us as three persons in one. Now let's go to the third characteristic of our triune God, and that is Jesus is God. Our Lord and Savior says this in John chapter 10, verse 30. The Father and I are one. Did you catch that? Jesus says that he and his heavenly Father are not two or three. They are one. And the Greek word used here for that word one is the word hes, which means, once again, the absolute primary number one. Just as part of the triune God, Jesus is part of that triune God. So he's still one and still indivisible. That's an incredible claim. And the religious establishment of the day recognized that as well. Jesus is proclaiming to be God. Jesus also affirms later to his followers, just before he died in John chapter 14, verses 8 through 11, Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus replied, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and yet you still don't know who I am? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So why are you asking me to show him to you? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I speak are not my own, but my Father who lives in me and does his work through me. Just believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe because of the work you have seen me do. Jesus did come from heaven to us here in this world. Let's take a look at Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 through 8, and it confirms this truth. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Scripture explains this further in Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 through 18. Listen to these words from Scripture. Because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood, the Son also became flesh and blood. For only as a human being could he die. He and only by dying could he break the power of the devil, who had the power of death. Only in this way could he set free all who have lived their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. We also know that the Son did not come to help angels. He came to help the descendants of Abraham. Therefore, it was necessary for him to be made in every respect like us 
his brothers and sisters, so that he could be our merciful and faithful high priest before God. Then he could offer a sacrifice that would take away the sins of the people. Since he himself has gone through suffering and testing, he is able to help us when we are being tested. It's the third characteristic. Jesus is God. This brings us to the fourth characteristic of our triune God, and that is the Holy Spirit is God. Let's take a look at the second book of Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 17. And it proclaims this truth about the equality of the Spirit with God. For the Lord is the Spirit, and wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. The Bible here affirms the divine nature of the Holy Spirit. Folks, here's what our triune God is all about and means for each of us. The Holy Trinity is the revealed resulting grace because of Jesus as the Son's sacrifice that then unites us with the wonderful love of God the Father which is then made real to us in our lives through the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to close today with these verses from that great hymn, Now Thank We All Our God. All praise and thanks to God, who reigns in highest heaven, to Father and to Son and Spirit, now be given. The one eternal God who heaven and earth adore, the God who was and is and shall be evermore. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your wonderful example of a perfect relationship that exists, that exists between you, your Son, and your Holy Spirit. And we thank you, Lord, that we have access to you because of the sacrifice on the cross for our sins by your only Son, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And we pray this through the holy name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Our next hymn is a classic, a good one, Just As I Am Without One Plea, still working out of the green hymn. This is hymn number 296. Words will also be up on the screen.
sacrifice to sins on our cross. And that's what it's all about. Help us, Lord, to proclaim that truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we are in need of healing within, not only within our physical bodies and our within this congregation, but maybe spiritually and mentally as well. So Lord, we pray for your healing to come down. Send your whole Jehovah Jehovah down to all of those people who are in our hearts and minds at this time that are in need of your healing touch. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we continue to pray for healing in this nation. We've turned away from you, Lord. But you have promised us in your holy scripture that, that if we turn from our wicked ways and seek your face, you will hear our prayers and heal this land. So, Lord, we continue to pray for this nation. We pray for our nation's leaders, from our president, all the way down to our school boards and city councils, Lord. We pray for your protection. Lord, we also pray for your guidance and discernment to guide all of the decisions they make in accordance to your will for how this country will move forward. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Lord, we pray especially for all of those people putting their lives on the line, protecting those freedoms we have here. Lord, we ask you, while all the soldiers who are on mission far away can keep them safe. And then when their mission is done, Lord, we ask you to bring them back safely, back to their back to their homes and cities again, Lord. And then remind us, Lord, we need to stand by those soldiers just as they stood by for us. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Lord, we need to recognize those people putting their lives on the line in our own communities. Law enforcement, fire department, ambulance personnel, emergency room personnel in the hospitals. Lord, protect them, keep them safe on shift. And Lord, remind us every time we hear a siren, we need to pray for that situation. And we need to pray for those responding officers for their safety. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Lord, we also pray for all those people putting their lives on the line, proclaiming your gospel truth. All those missionaries that we support individually and as a congregation, Lord, protect them. Keep them safe. Protect them from any kind of human evil. Protect them from the darts of Satan. Lord, we pray for a protection of all their ministries as well, from a protection of any kind of human evil and evil of Satan. And Lord, please provide them with the resources that they need to do those ministries you have called them to. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for peace. Your shalom. 
Lord, we pray that there's so many nations in need of that inner peace, Lord. And not only within our own country, but Lord, Syria, Sudan, Israel, Ukraine. So many countries, Lord, that are on our hearts and minds at this time, Lord. Bring your peace, because it's the only peace that can really bring a true shalom, a true peace to these nations. Lord, in your mercy, yes. hear our prayer. If there's anyone who has any prayers that they would like to bring forth at this time, please go ahead and sit. Lord, we ask that you provide the necessary funds for those people who are working to save the lives of other people, such as the mercy ships, such as Samaritan's Purse, who works, they work to save people in war torn countries, such as Ukraine. They work in disaster areas to bring your word to people who are hurting. We ask that you keep your hand upon them and give them your blessing. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all from whom we pray. Trusting in the mercy of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Please share that peace of God with one another. We will now take our offering at this time. I thank you in advance for your grateful and gracious hearts. Anyone who is watching us online that would like to provide towards our ministry here at Faith Food the Mission Church, address at the bottom of the screen if you can write out a check and send it to us. We promise to use it for building the kingdom of God. Also, PayPal is available.
Let us pray. Merciful Father, we offer joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord. And on this day, we celebrate his promise of pouring out this, the spirit of life upon all of us and the power given to his chosen disciples. So as the whole earth exults in this boundless joy, we, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, proclaim here and praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy.
body of Christ is broken for you.